the first things, we announced two new SLRs on the, um, on the 7th of February, uh, the 1100D, which is a baby model in the very, very entry level of our, of our lineup. It's meant to step directly above the 1000D at the entry level end of the market. Um, eventually it's going to supersede the 1000D. The 1000D is going to carry on for another couple of months um, to keep the, the entry level sales. And we're very, very proud of the fact that we maintained our number one position in market share in South Africa last year. At the end of 2010, our market share was about 56% of DSLR, which is actually very good. What's scary is that the market has basically um, changed quite dramatically. Even though the volume of cameras going out there has increased, the three big brands playing are now representative of over 99% of the market, with Canon at about 56%, Nikon at about 35%, and Sony at about 6% which is leaving less than 1% for Olympus, Pentax, Fuji, Panasonic, <coughs> etc., etc. So there's, it's quite scary because all of the other products like Olympus, they've got some great new SLRs, Pentax, etc. They're struggling to fight with a 1% market share due to the dominance of Canon because our products are really good, our market's been uh, very appreciative, appreciative of our product for a while. Nikon's been spending a lot of money in advertising, they've grown their brand very well over the last year. Um, so we've seen them uh, come out as a very, very strong number two um, as a competitor. Sony's seen a little bit of a decline recently, mostly because of uh, internal changes. Their management structure has now become uh, part of the Middle East structure. So um, we're hopefully going to see them come along with um, some strong products as, as far as 2011 is concerned to keep a strong number three position. But um, as I say, their market share has declined from about 20% two years ago down to less than 10. So it is a little bit disconcerting for us. But it's interesting to see that the end users are now choosing brands that have a system. And it's one of the most important things when buying SLRs. You're not just buying a camera, you're buying into a system. And it's about a choice of additional lenses or remote controls or hoods or flashes, etc. Uh, to that end, we're, we're going to continue pushing the entry-level lineup. Last year, we had three models, the uh, 1000D, 500D, and um, 450D. We changed that. We added the 550 in there, and the 450 phased out. This year, um, right now, we have five models. We have the 1000, the 1100, the 500, the 550, and the 600. All five SLRs below 10,000 Rand, which is kind of scary um, having that many models in the market. By the tail end of this year, it'll drop down to three. We'll have the 1100, the 550 in the middle of the range, and the 600 as the flagship. Um, interesting little product on the 1100 um, in terms of features, capabilities. It's a 12 million pixel camera. It's got HD video, not full HD. But very simple, very, very easy to use, and great for the absolute beginners to get started with. And we're finding that quite a large segment of the market is looking still for their first time purchase on the DSLR. Um, the next model we announced is the 600D, uh, almost identical in specification to the 550, but what we've added now is the flip out screen, which would prove to be really, really popular on the 60D. And we've also built in the, um, the wireless flash transmitter. Uh, this is going to come in as our flagship in the, in the entry level range, sort of bridging the gap between the amateurs uh, and the semi pros. It's a great camera for people who are starting out into wedding photography because the quality is really good at 18 million pixels. Great capabilities in terms of off camera flash uh, for people in the creative studio type of environment, but also full high definition video, which is quite interesting for us that um, we've had very, very, very good success in the Full HD video segment. And as I say, this is a step up from the 550D. It's going to launch at about a thousand rand more than the 550D, which we're still trying to get an idea from the market whether that's okay to get a flip-out screen, wireless transmitter, and a couple of other little interesting things. But as basic spec for a thousand rand, that sounds about right to us. The other two changes that we had in the um, SLR lineup was about the two new flash guns. Um, we had a Speedlight 270 already on the market. We've now made a Mark II version of that, which is still a little tiny compact flash which uses a, uh, two penlight batteries. It's got a zoom and it's got a tilt feature, which makes it very, very handy. But the thing is they've now put the wireless slave in that. So when you're using something like a 600D, you can have a little flash off camera without, without cables, without anything, uh, and work it completely wirelessly. Having two of these little flashes on a table with a small product, for example, means that Joe Public can have a camera with a reasonable macro lens, two tiny little flashes, and do product shots for catalogs quite simply and quite easily without having to invest an absolute fortune. Um, in addition, they've also included a remote control into the flashes. So for those of you who 
get completely and utterly, um, well, whose wives get completely irritated with pushing buttons and standing holding flashes and things like that. You can actually have a little remote control button over here. So if I want to take a photograph of myself and have the flash over there, hitting the button and firing the camera remotely is completely feasible. Um, the other new flash we announced is Speedlight 320, which is, fits quite nicely in our lineup. We've had a big gap between the 27 meter guide number on the baby and the 43 guide number on the big boy. Big boy. Um, 32 fits in quite nicely in the gap, so quite a powerful flash. You've got zoom, you've got pan, and you've got tilt, so you can bounce this quite nicely. But the biggest additional feature they've put on there is a video light. Now, up until now, we've either had video lights as accessories for video cameras, or we've had flashes as accessories for still cameras. Having the two in one shows you that that synergy is happening on a huge scale. More and more people are taking a camera to a function, to an event, and not just taking photographs, they're shooting video as well. And having a powerful little video light built into the flash um, is proving to be quite an interesting thing. And as I say, it's our first in the market with that. We're actually quite excited about this particular product. Price-wise, it's very, very attractive. Uh, Feature-wise, very, very strong and very, very usable. Again, it's got the built-in remote control. Again, it's got the built-in wireless slave function as well. We also announced three lenses. The three big lenses are the 500mm F4, uh, image stabilizer Mark II, the 600 F4 image stabilizer Mark II. Um, those we pre-announced at Photokina last year, so people already knew they were coming. Uh, and we're actually quite happy with lens division from, from Canon Inc. that they're now actually giving us ammunition. So when people say, is there a new 500 millimeter coming? I know, I normally know six months in advance, but I've never allowed to tell people up until embargo. So Canon Lens Division has made a concerted decision right up front to pre-announce uh, products. And the two, the two five, the 500 and 600, the sports wildlife photographers, the bird photographers are already going nuts about them because they were expected, they were pre-announced six months ago. The best and the most interesting pre-announcement we did on the 7th of February was the, the new 200 to 400 F4L image stabilizer lens. Um, Nikon's been doing spectacularly well with their 200 to 400, and we've taken a lot of flack from the sports and the bird photographers because we don't have an equivalent. Um, we're very, very happy that on the 7th of February they pre-announced it's going to be available later this year. We're making a 200-400 f4L lens. Um, it is going to be expensive, make no mistake. It's, it's not a cheap piece of glass by any stretch of the imagination. But what we've done uh, is quite a radical thing. We've put in a built-in teleconverter. Now, um, the prototype that I've seen is quite in insane. It's absolutely amazing. We were all worried about this built-in teleconverter. Uh, is it an electronic switch and a motor? It's not. It's completely mechanical. You've got a little lever, and you crank it in with a satisfying clunk. This converter drops into place. And you not only have a 200-400 f4, you automatically then have a 280-560 to at f5.6. Two lenses in one. For the sports, wildlife, bird photographers, absolutely the same. We're told that the optical quality of the converter is as good as, if not better, than using a separate converter. But again, we've been listening to what a lot of the pro photographers wanted. They all wanted this lens. But a lot of them were saying, in the field environment, if you're shooting wildlife and birds, 200-400 is quite fantastic. And when you get to a small bird, for example, you often want to put the teleconverter on just to get that a little bit closer. And the amount of time taken between take camera off the body, put the converter on, then put it back on, you often lose shots. Having a situation where you can just slide a slip, slide a lever, and clunk, you've got the longer lens right there without having to worry about dust getting into the, the mechanisms, etc. Um, it's going to prove to be very, very interesting. But hopefully by the time we do this press event sometime in September, October this year, I will have one to show you if they um, decide to loan me a more than 10,000 euro device.